Hello and welcome to Julie Hall Designs. Today I want to share with you how I create cutwork designs using my Genomi Digitizer software. Now, this is software that is made by Wilcom, so you can create using very similar methods using Wilcom, Hatch or Benina software. So you can see here I have my digitizer open. I've decided to make this cutwork design using my 230 by 300 hoop. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is bring in my artwork. The simplest way to do that is to come up on the main menu and select artwork. Come down to where I've got my picture stored and show the picture. I'm then going to enlarge that picture. To enlarge the picture both vertically and horizontally, hold down your shift key and then drag the picture till you get it to where you would like it to be. And I then right mouse click and select lock so that I can't accidentally move that image. Now, when it comes to creating cut work, you're working with quite a delicate design. So what I want to do is set up my system so that I have the right background to my stitching. To do that, we come up here to the top and go into software settings and manage auto fabrics. And from there, I want to create a new fabric called Cutwork. And I am going to base that on just a basic pure cotton standard fabric. What I want to do here is I want to change the narrow satin stitch to having an underlay of a center run and zigzag. and a standard stitch length of 1.5. Once I've done that, I then need to come through to design settings and select which fabric I'm going to use. So I need to apply those settings that we had put on there to this design. Now you could go through, if you don't have the ability in your software to do that, you could go through after you've created the design and do each one individually. For me, this just makes it simpler. Um, now I am a manual kind of gal. I digitize all of my work manually. So on the toolbox on the left hand side, I want to come through and select the digitize option. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a running stitch around where we are going to cut. So I want to zoom in and I zoom in using the Z button. And I want to create one by one those shapes. Now we use a right mouse click for curves and a left mouse click for sharp edges and you use either a space bar or an enter to complete that segment. And I'm always zooming in and out, just checking where I am. So what this is going to do is show us exactly where we are trimming. Thank you. 
and it really is just a case of um, going through and adding each individual element one by one uh, damn. and it helps if you click on then the right button if you make a mistake backwards or you can simply come through and um, edit or reshape as you go along and ta-da all of those designs are done now are you aware that you can click on the D button on your keyboard to show you exactly what you have created without your outlook or sorry without your artwork and then select D again to show the artwork again so this is going to allow me to come through and trim all of that out what I then want to do is my second colorway is going to show or is going to attach this same fabric and this same outline down to exactly um, in exactly the same spot to my wash away stabilizer. So all I'm going to do is select and I've changed here my resequencing so that I can select the, all of the colors at once and I've just copied and pasted using control C and control V without clicking anything I've changed the color down here down the bottom so that you can now see I have the same set of objects twice over just on a different colorway and that is the fastest way to do that from there I'm gonna come through and we are going to create our and I'm sure my pronunciation is wrong I'm more than happy if somebody wants to correct that my Richelieu's or my bar tacks that are going to hold our cut work together so to do that and I like to keep everything separate colors I don't really mind what color you use um, it's your project you can use whatever darn color you would like but um, so I'm going to select a pale yellow here and I'm going to select a satin stitch and I want that satin stitch to be 1.5 millimeters which is incredibly small but remember it is just for these bar tacks now um, so it is an open shape that we are doing and one of the tricks that you want to do here is you want to make sure that you are on the outside of the line that we have already drawn because these bar tacks are going to hold together this fabric so we want to make sure that they are on that outside and it doesn't have to be a lot outside we're just talking millimeters now I realize most of us have um, cutters on our machines these days and that is all well and good and wonderful I still like wherever possible to add in um, sorry I'm just making that the most readable that I can now you realize that if you don't like the zoom options you can come up here to the zoom bar at the top if you don't have a zoom bar go and select the right mouse click in your menu area and select view 
and set your own viewing style that works best for your screen. Um, but I like to do a running stitch in between just because it gives a better final result. Uh, if you're not constantly cutting, you end up with a better um, look at the back of the project. There aren't all those um, um, all those little stitch, all those little um, threads hanging around. So we are going to come through and row by row. Now, what I do want to show you on that if I go into the stitching you will see that I have a center run and a zigzag as my underlay as we set up earlier in the software settings so that is exactly what we are after okay let me quickly create the rest of these bar tacks okay so you can see here I have all of those bar tacks completed now. Now before I do anything else, I am going to come along and save my work. Don't mind where you save it, wherever works well for you. Trust me though, you do want to save it because you don't want to lose um, your design yesterday I had a power outage and I lost two designs that I was working on at the time so I am now up to doing the wider satin around all of the cut work just to differentiate I am going to use a different color when I stitch it out, I generally use the same color, but I just like giving myself and anybody else who is doing that design the option. And whilst I'm still going to be using the satin, I'm going to change the width to a 2.5 millimeter width. I don't know what it is. I just like starting from the top of a design. Maybe it's a little bit compulsive, but I'm going to come through with that satin stitch and following the same sort of line as what we did when we were making the cut work line what I want to do is just create that satin around now that's a really ugly edge um, or ugly finish that we've got at the top there but you can change that just by coming through and popping and I'll do that again so that you can see what I've done if you can see there we've got two separate lines if we take um, so using our reshape tool if we take the edge of that first line and put it right on top of the other you get a completed edge and from there I will often then just come in and manipulate it around just that little bit so that it's not taking up quite as much room and I would do that on that end as well and that gives you a much prettier looking finish so we'll come through and do the next one And alter that one as well there we go and we're going to do that for all of our work at the same time I'm also going to using the digitize block and the fill of satin I'm going to come through and create a satin fill for the leaves at the same time so that I'm stitching everything at once. Now 
Now, although it is looking quite chunky at the moment, it's difficult to understand just how much things um, like a satin that's that looks quite wide here actually ends up looking not at all wide once you have it on the fabric. So don't be too concerned about that. And I'm now going to come through and do that satin edging around the rest of the design. Okay, so I'll show you what I've done so far. I'm just at the end of the design now. So I filled in all of those satin stitches. And I'm just going to do these last two. Remember to use the left and right mouse buttons to create your curve and straight lines. Okay, so if I take that artwork away, and I do that just by clicking on the D button or um, under Show and Bitmap Artwork, So what I'm looking for as I come through now is just anything that looks a little bit out of place. I should have four colors here. So I've got my initial outline, my holding down the outline to the wash away stabilizer, my bar tacks, and then the satin stitch outline. So my cutwork design is ready to save and then to load onto my sewing machine ready for test stitching. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you learned something. Please feel free to ask any questions at our um, at either the bottom of the video or you can contact me directly at sales at julieholdesigns.com. Thank you very much. Until next time, have a stitching day. Bye.